Okay, first thing we're gonna do is go over number eight on the weekly worksheet. We've talked about these before, but I just wanna make sure we're all on the right track because this will also be, something like this will be on your homework tonight, okay? If you are comparing or ordering fractions, what do we have to do, Reese? Yeah, I have to make them comparable, okay? Which in the in fractions case means get all of the denominators to the same number. My suggestion, look at the largest denominator and see if the other ones go into that. A lot of the times that's the case. If that doesn't work, look at the smallest and the largest and multiply them together and then see if they all go into that one, okay? Beyond that, it gets a little bit trickier, but usually one of those two ways gets us to a common denominator. You could always multiply all four numbers together also. That would just give us a really big number to be working with, okay? So who thinks they know a denominator that works for 8, 2, 24, and 6? Stella? 24. 24. So when we do these, I highly suggest you stay organized. So I'm going to drop them all down and show that I want them all to have a denominator of 24. Okay? Paxton, we're doing this together. So stay with me. How do I turn a 8 into a 24, Callan? Multiply it by 3. So I'm going to show that I'm going to take this times 3. When I am creating equivalent fractions, if I multiply the denominator by 3, what else do I need to do, Jalen? Multiply the top by 3. What's 3 times 3, Jalen? 9. nine. So 3 eighths and 9 24 so What do we call those two fractions? Equivalent fractions, which means they have the same value. Okay, They have the same value. If I said you get 3 eighths of this sub sandwich and you get 9 24 of this sub sandwich, they're getting the same amount of that sandwich. Okay, 1 half. How do I turn a 2 into a 24 using math? Emmett? 2 times what equals 24? 12. So I'm going to show that I'm multiplying this one by 12, multiply that one by 12. So I have 12 24 ths. Next one, do I need to change it? No. no, it already had the 24 as the denominator, so I'm going to leave it be. Cooper, how do I turn a 6 into a 24? Multiply it by 4. Hey okay, guys, since we're doing this one together, everybody should have it correct and have some work with it. Now that I have a common denominator, how do I compare them? Jalen? Okay, so wh what do we put in order from least to greatest? How do we decide which one is the smallest? The one that has the smallest Yeah, the smallest numerator. Now we just look at the numerators. My suggestion with fractions is just number them because she is correct. We always want to give our answer in its original form because it did not ask me about 12 24ths anywhere in the problem. It asked me about 1 half. So in my answer, I need to have 1 half not 12 24 ths. So, Carter, looking at the numerators, which number is the smallest? Three so, 9 24. So, I'm going to put a 1 under that. Tell me that's the one I want to list first. What should I double check before I start listing them at all? Paxton? Look for like LG or. Yeah, am I going least to greatest or greatest to least? Because it could ask us both. What would come next? Carter? Yep. What do you notice about these numbers? Yeah, they already had them in order. But let's go ahead and write them. And again, we write them in their original form. So that's why I suggest staying nice and neat. Because if you work straight down and this is your bit smallest one, look all the way at the top. So we will write 3 eighths is less than 1 half, which is less than... 15 24 which is less than 5 6. We would go through that exact same process if I was just trying to decide greater than, less than, or equal to 
for just two fractions. Okay, so this is actually harder than what we'll do on our homework tonight. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video for a second. Okay, so this piece of paper that I have on the board that I just passed out, keep that out and clear everything else off your desk. So you only have the paper in front of you that says simplifying fractions notes. Everything we're gonna discuss today is a review. I am not teaching you anything new today. I am just gonna make sure you remember all of this stuff from last year. We've already talked about some of it this year, um, but we're gonna spend today just making sure we have this stuff down before we move on to the new stuff with fractions. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do on this piece of paper, I want you to flip it to the back. I can't scroll down anymore because mine is, like that's the last thing there. But the back of your paper at the bottom is mostly blank, right? Okay. On your paper, because it's hole punched, there's probably a hole about, like right down here, right? Yeah. Or except on the other side? Yeah. Between that hole right here and the hole under it, I want you to draw a line, kind of halfway between the two, not there between the two holes to where really you're kind of making a line across the bottom third the bottom third of the paper okay I can pull it up on a whiteboard I just can't do it on here so if this is your the back of your worksheet okay there's writing at the top <clears throat> there's a circle there's a circle the hole punch try and draw a line kind of in the middle of it doesn't have to be perfect and then divide that bottom section in half. <clears throat> you guys already know a lot about fractions. You already have a lot of background knowledge in this topic. I'm going to have you take a second and I'm going to write the fraction. That fraction right there. And I'm going to write that fraction right there. In those boxes, I want you to just make some bullet points about things that you know about those two fractions. Anything you know, if it relates to fractions, I don't want you to put there's a 5 and a 7. Okay, that has nothing to do with fractions. You know a lot of information about, that fr about this fraction in the first box and that fraction in the second box. I want you to just write down, just make bullet points, or if you want to draw arrows and label stuff, you're, I'm just trying to see what you already know about those two things, okay? So I'm going to give you about three minutes. Get as much down as possible. Is there like a picture of it? That's fine. Yep. Okay, you're, you're putting as many bullet points, as, many, as much as you can in the next two or three minutes. Did I give you a paper, Caden? Okay. Draw a line at the bottom. Set it up. Write the two fractions, and you're just telling me anything you already know.
Okay, finish what you're writing and then just stop. As I make my list, I want you to add to your list. Chase, tell me something about this one over on the left side. Okay, it is in, it is simplified, so it is in simplest form. So I'm going to write simplest, I want you to add that, simplest form. Who can tell me what does it mean that it's in simplest form, Cam? It means that you can't make it any lower, like you can't divide, you can't break it down any more. Yeah, you cannot reduce it anymore. You, there are no equivalent fractions that have smaller numbers in it that is equal to that. Okay, you cannot divide the top and the bottom by anything else. Livy. Okay, it is not equal to one whole. I agree. What would it have to be for it to be equal to one whole? Go ahead, Liv. Or, okay, she said seven sevenths. What, else, what other fraction could it be? Emmett? Okay, who can give me the other one that it could be? Paxton? Um, like, Using the numbers that are there. Oh, like, like, it's like, it's like a one and it's a zero and a seven. No. Cam? Five, seven, five, and five, seven, five, seven, five, five over five. Any number over itself could be a whole. So it isn't equal to one whole. I agree with that. Emmett, what were you going to say? Okay, what's your question? Oh, okay. You could you drew the picture. So what does your picture look like? I have like a rectangle. Okay, so you have one long rectangle broken into how many equal parts? Seven, seven which gets kind of tricky. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's seven. And then what did you do, Emmett? Shaded in five of them. So Emmett knew how to model five sevenths. I agree. Anything else that we know? Reese? Okay. That that problem does mean five divided by seven. We're going to add to that. Cooper, are you getting all this? We could also say that it means five out of Seven. And think about like your math homework and your math quizzes and tests. I give you your grade as a fraction. So if you got a five sevenths as a grade, you wouldn't say that. You would say I got a five out of seven on my quiz or on my worksheet. It's all meaning the same thing. You got five out of a possible seven. So now I'm going to go with that. What do we call the top number in a fraction? Lena? The numerator, I'm going to go ahead and just label it up here. Numerator. What is the bottom number called, Callan? The denominator. Oops. I was going to put. And if you got five out of seven, what does that, what else does that mean, Jack? If you divide five divided by seven, you get seven So actually, if you take five divided by seven, you would get the decimal equivalent of five sevenths, which would be your grade. And then we can convert decimals to percent. That's actually a huge part of sixth grade math is converting fractions to decimals to percents. They all have the same value. Like one that you probably already know is one-fourth. What do you think the decimal equivalency is to one-fourth? Kellen? One so that's still a fraction. How do you say 2,500? What does 25 hundredths as a decimal look like? 0 0.25 is the decimal equivalency to one-fourth. What do you think the percent is? If you get one out of four correct, Cam? 25%. Okay, so you already kind of have a basic understanding that every fraction has a decimal and a percent form, but that's a big part of sixth grade. We'll get into it a little bit this year, um, but not today. This means that five is our part and seven is our what? Whole. Good job. 
So if you got five out of seven, that means the part that you actually earned was five points out of a possible or a whole seven point. You're writing all this, okay? So that's quite a bit. Let's add to our knowledge over on the other side. We're not gonna repeat everything. That, oh, uh, one more thing. What do we call this? One, not just a fraction. What's the whole name? A proper fraction. Let's add that in. A proper fraction. Okay. Now, on the other side, we're going to see if there's anything else we can add that we don't already have here. Okay. And again, we're talking about a different number, so some things might also change. Chase? We don't mixed number, okay? Because it's a whole number and a fraction mixed together. So we do call it a mixed number. Okay, we do call it a mixed number. The two is still the numerator because it's the top. The three is still the denominator because it's the bottom. Avery, you have something else to add? Okay, it has a whole number. What is my whole number? The one is my whole number. So that is a whole number. Callan? It's not an improper fraction because it's a mixed number. We can convert it to an improper fraction. So we can, can change to improper fraction. I'm just going to put FR. Jack? In form. Okay, it is also in simplest form. I agree. Reese? If you like add or subtract, you can add like a fraction number or like another mixed number, like with a whole number and a fraction. Like if you can get another fraction. Okay, anytime we add or subtract to or from anything, we would get a new one, but I agree with that. Now, I'm going to go back to 5 sevenths for a second. What does that mean? What does five sevenths mean, Emmett? <laughs> Cam, it's hard to put into words. That's why. I, that's why I'm asking. You have five out of the seven. That's okay, Jack. Five divided by seven. It, all of all of these are true, Livy. I agree with all of those. But what I want to start um, stressing is that 5 7 means you have five, 5 that are 1 seventh sized. Really, you have five pieces. I should have added in pieces. Five pieces that are 1 seventh sized. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go back to Paxton's picture that he drew for us. Ethan, Emmett. Oh, Emmett helped us draw the picture. Sorry, Emmett's picture. He first broke it into each piece is how big? One seventh. Five sevenths means you have five pieces that are all one seventh of the whole. Does you see where I'm coming up with this? Five pieces that are one seventh sized which means each of these pieces are one seventh. And if my fraction is five sevenths, I have five pieces that are all one seventh sized compared to the whole. So how could I model that one if I had to? Briley? Okay. Okay, so in this one you're saying I shade in all of them, and that one I would just shade in two. I agree. So do you guys agree that one and two thirds is the same thing as one plus two thirds? Yes, because I have one whole and two thirds of a second one. So one and two thirds is really just like one plus
plus 2 thirds. Does this also mean the same thing? Yes, and that's really, I pulled that from, Ken, or from Briley's picture. This one is 3 thirds are shaded in at the top. That's where my 3 thirds came from. And this one, 2 thirds. All together, would I have one whole and 2 thirds of a second one? Yeah? Okay, one more thing we're going to add before we move on to the actual notes. This is just bringing back what you already know. The fraction 5 sevenths, what two whole numbers does it fall between? What two whole numbers does 5 sevenths fall between? Emmett? 6 and 6 and a half. So be careful. If I gave you 5 sevenths of a cookie, would you have 6 whole cookies? How many, what two whole cookie amounts would you have? If I, yeah, not a whole cookie, so zero whole cookies and one whole cookie. So if it's a proper fraction, it is always between the whole numbers zero and one. Always. Because there's no whole number out in front. The whole number would be zero if there was one. So 5 sevenths is between 0 and 1. What about the 1 and 2 thirds? What does that fall between? Which two whole numbers is 1 and 2 thirds between? Ethan? If you have 1 and 2 thirds cookies. 1 and 2? Yeah, because you have more than 1 cookie, but you have less than 2 whole cookies. So it does fall between 1 and 2. Okay, again, I'm just trying to bring back your common knowledge, your prior knowledge of fractions. Okay, now let's flip it to the front. I have to pull mine back up. We'll zip right through these because this is all review. Simplest form. When there aren't any more factors that go into blank, the numerator and the denominator. Callan, what do you think? Let's read the next one too. To simplify fractions, blank the numerator and the denominator by the same number until you cannot go any lower. What do you think goes there, Callan? Divide. Okay, so let's fill in divide there. And it is kind of worded funny, I agree. Who thinks they know what goes in that top blank? When there aren't any more factors that go into blank, the numerator and the denominator. Nolan? Both. Both. Good job. So we're just going to do a few examples. I'm going to make up some numbers. 30 over 48. Last year, I know you guys talked about GCF. Who remembers what GCF stands for? Chase? Greatest is the first word, I agree. Nope, fraction. Factor, greatest common factor. Now, you use greatest common factor to get to simplest form quickly, okay? I'm going to show you, you can do this multiple ways. I do not care if you get to simplest form in one step or if it takes you 12 steps. As long as you keep going until you look at the fraction and it cannot be reduced anymore. Okay, so we're going to work this first one two different ways just to show you what I mean by that. So, Kenley, give me a number that is a factor of both 30 and 48. Remember, if they're both even, what goes into them? Two. Two. That's an easy one to always look for. Who remembers the divisibility rule for three? For three. If Paxton? If they have like, um, if they have like something that you can divide by three. I, the other part of that's important though. Cam? If the two numbers add up negative. 
Yeah, if the sum of the digits, which means if you add the digits and that sum is divisible by 3, then that larger number is divisible by 3. So like here, 3 plus 0, what's 3 plus 0? 3. three. three. What's 4 plus 8? Are 3 and 12 divisible by 3? Yes. So that means 30 and 48 are also divisible by 3. Okay? Let's just start with 2. Let's divide them both by 2. Divide them both by 2. Cooper, what's 30 divided by 2? 15. Are you getting this written down? 48 divided by 2, Cam? 24. Now, when you simplify a fraction, when you think you're done, stop, look. Can it be simplified anymore? If the answer is yes, that means you are not finished. Callan. I'm not done. What goes into them? Three can go into both of them. So I'm going to divide them both by three again. Fifteen divided by three is five over eight. When you think you're done, look at the numbers. Are they both even? Yes. Nope. Does three go into either of them? Nope. Does four? Nope. No Does five? Nope. Why can I really stop? Because yeah. So that is simplest form, okay? We're going to work that same problem a different way. Jack, what is a number that goes into 30 and 48? Six. six. If I divide them both by six, six is actually the greatest common factor, meaning I would get to my answer quicker. I do not care if you have to divide it a few times to get to simplest form or if you get there in one step as long as you get there. Now look here. We divided by 2 and then divided by 3. What's 2 times 3? 6. So we essentially did the exact same math on both sides. We just broke it up over on that side. Okay, um, next example. I want you to write down 12 and 10 fifteenths. When you have a mixed number, the whole number doesn't change. It does not disappear. So I'm going to write equals and put a big 12 over there so I don't forget it. Naomi, what's something that goes into 10 and 15? Five, so I'm going to divide them both by five. And I would get two. So 12 and 2 thirds is in simplest form. Notice it's not 2 thirds. Common error right there is you guys, especially when you have to reduce a few times to get there, you'll leave off the whole number. If I said you can have 12 and 2 thirds cookies and I gave you two-thirds of a cookie, would you be a little upset? Yes. yes, because it's not the same thing. It's a common goofy error, but it's not the same thing. Okay? Moving on. Improper fractions to mix numbers. We've already done this this year, so I am going to do a couple examples quickly and then we're going to move on again. 29-6. Remember, that is just saying 29 <laughs> divided by 6. Avery, how many times does 6 go into 29? Four times. 6 times 4 is 24. What do I do with my remainder, Paxton? Chase? You put the 5 uh, on, as a numerator and 6 as a denominator? Yes, I have 4 holes, okay? 6 goes into 29 4 whole times, and then there's 5 out of 6 left over. So 4 and 5, 6. Go ahead and you do 11 halves. Change 11 halves 
to a mixed number. Logan, what did you get? Yep, five and a half. Good job. 38. I want you to notice something. Currently, it's an improper fraction. Okay, we can only change improper fractions to mixed numbers. We can't change proper fractions to mixed numbers. But what else do you notice about that improper fraction, Reese? Lena? They're both even numbers, which means, can I reduce it? Yes. If you notice that, re go ahead and reduce it first. That'll give you smaller numbers to divide out. Okay, so I'm going to reduce both of these by 2. So show divide by 2, divide by 2. That would give us 15 fourths. Can 15 fourths be reduced? Yes. No. It can't be reduced. But can it be written in a better way? Yes. yes, we can divide it out and write it as a mixed number. Simplest form will never be an improper fraction. Okay? If it's an improper fraction, you can flip it around to a mixed number to simplify it. How many times does 4 go into 15? 3. And then we have th remainder of 3, which becomes our numerator. So it would be 3 and 3 fourths. If I would have taken 30 divided by 8, I would have gotten 3 and 6 eighths. And then I would have to divide them by 2 to reduce. Regardless of how you get there, you would get to the same point. You would essentially do the same math, just in a different order. OK? Do I care which way you go? No. Okay, flip it to the back. You guys have changed mixed numbers to improper fractions before. We're going to the top. We should still have some space at the top. I'm going to show you how I would like you to show it. You guys know that we have to take the denominator and multiply it by what? The whole number. All you have to do to show that is just put a dot right there, our multiplication dot. Nolan, then what do we do? Reese? Then we would add the top. So I'm going to have you, when you're doing this, put your dot, put your plus sign. And then I call it the wheel, just to help you have a visual. You start at the bottom, and you do the math as we work our way around. What's 2 times 3? 6 plus 2? 8. And that number goes there. So you start at the bottom, you wheel yourself around to the top of the other one. That's how we get our numerator. What's my denominator? It stays the same. Okay, let's do one more of those. 10 and 5 eighths. What work do I want to see? Chase? Okay, so I'm going to show my dot there. What else do I need to show? A plus sign. And then I'm going to show my wheel. I'm going to wheel myself around. 8 times 10 plus 5 is 85. What's my denominator? 8. OK, listen. Listen carefully. Shh. Hey, guys, everybody sit still for a second. Quit moving around. So I can talk. I need everybody to listen. Shh. You do have a worksheet for homework. There are four problems on comparing fractions. Guys, have a seat. Hold on. Have a seat. Have a seat. Did we get to comparing fractions today? No. We did the number eight on the weekly worksheet together. I want you to give it your best shot. OK, what do I expect from you? Effort, diligence, OK? 
So this worksheet is your homework.